In this data graph demo, I'm going to show you how to combine graphs with images. The data set that I'm going to use today is not quite as famous as the one that we did in my last video, where we did a global fit to kinetic data using the Michaelis-Menten equation. But Maud Menten made important contributions to other fields, in particular the field of histology. Histology is this microscopic study of tissues, where tissues are often colorized in vivid colors such as reds and, yes, purples. You can get the file that we're going to create today from the online examples within Datagraph. And the image in that file is of a gastric chief cell. These cells are responsible for producing an enzyme called pepsin in our digestive systems, and pepsin is very important for breaking down proteins. From the data that you can see here, pepsin is also highly dependent upon pH, at least the activity of pepsin is highly dependent upon pH. I'm using Datagraph version 5.2 for this demo. If you don't have Datagraph, go into the description of this video. You can get a link where you can download a trial. For the demo, we're going to have basically three steps that I'll go through. The first step is going to be getting the data from the PDF, and because I hate to type, I'm going to show you a trick that I've found helpful when getting data from PDFs. The second step is going to be doing a basic plot of that data, where we'll have the points with error bars, and a line that's connecting those points. And then the last step is going to be bringing the image in and compositing that into one image like the one that you see here. Okay, let's get started. If you want to work along with us, you can go ahead and open up the example file, graph and image. And here's the data that we're going to get. Again, I wanna show you step-by-step step how I created this file. And to get a link to the data, you can come over here to the side panel and click on this note. There's the reference to where the data came from, and there's also an, uh, a link there to a URL where you can get the paper. The data we're using is from table one in that paper. And I don't like typing, and I also think it's prone to error. So I really like to copy and paste, but if you've ever copy and pasted from PDFs before, it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to show you what happens here and show you a trick that I have found very useful. So I've highlighted all this data and I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. Now let's go back into Datagraph and I want to do this in a brand new file. And now I'm going to just say edit, paste. First of all, you can see this is not what I want at all. It has the data going wide and I want it long. So to do that, first of all, let's just undo this. Instead of just doing a straight paste, we're going to use Edit Paste Special. And in Paste Special, we can say that we want to transpose the data. But the other thing here is that we need to set what the separator is. So these numbers now are separated by spaces rather than by a tab or comma separated. So I can change this to space. And now I get a preview that shows me, ah, now my data looks like columns. That's what I want. So go ahead and click paste in the bottom right. Now we see all our data, but it's still not quite right. So another thing that I like to do when I'm doing something like this is to actually take a screenshot of the data that I want to bring in just to give me a visual of what it should look like. So I just copied that. Now I go over to my Datagraph file and I'm gonna paste that visual in. So I just did a, a screenshot. I did a Command V to paste that in. And uh, so what I can see here, let me actually just hide this column, that the first column that pasted in is actually both the pH and the pepsin activity, but it's alternating so that the first row is the first row of pH, second row is the first row of pepsin, then I go to pH, then pepsin, pH, pepsin. So I want to pull this apart every other value. And a, and a way to do that that I have found useful is to actually use an expression. So I'm going to create this expression column. And let's just call this column that I pasted in data. And what I can do is I can use the row number. So I'm going to type the pound symbol. And uh, let's multiply that by 2. So 2 times the row number. Now I have to tell it how many rows, so let's give me 11 of these. Now I have even numbers here, and I can 
then type the name of this column and put this in parentheses so that essentially this is going to return the value at alternating rows. Now I have my pepsin activity and I can hold the option key, make a copy of that, and now I'm going to do the same thing, but we'll subtract one from that index. That gives me the pH. So again, I don't I, I really avoid typing at all costs. Um, and now that I have this, these, uh, I'll go ahead and just give this, I guess I will type that, Pepsin activity. Um, and now that I have these two columns, uh, let's bring back the column that I hid. So this is the column where we do have um, the standard error of the Pepsin activity from the data. It's off by one row, which is fine. I can just right click and say delete row one, but only from this column. And now I'll give this the name of standard error. And once I've done this, I no longer will need uh, the column that I pasted in. But first, before I delete that, I need to convert these two columns to number columns. I can select them both at the same time and then use the gear menu here to say change to number column. Then I don't need this data column anymore. I can just hit the delete key and now I have all the data that I want. I'm also just going to put this in a group and, uh, and give a name to this. Now we're going to plot this data. I no longer really need this screenshot anymore because it was really just here for me to make sure my data got imported correctly. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to actually use two commands. I'm going to use a plot command and a points command. And the reason for this is that I'm going to ultimately want my line within my plot and the outline of my point to be different colors. I could, if I wanted them to be the same color, I could use one plot command, but I want to have the option of using two colors. And you'll see when, when we colorize uh, our graph uh, what, why I did this. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with the plot command, select both columns, go up to the toolbar and you can click plot. There's my plot. And now I'm going to, uh, well, I can actually just click the gear menu here and say use in points command. Now I have the separate command with my points. Next is to add the error bars. You can go ahead and expand the points command and then down to the bottom, change error style to tiny bars, for example. And this is the error, the, or the error is going to be in the Y direction. So I can take the standard error column and I can just uh, drag and drop that there if I like. And now, um, let's see, what. oh, I need to, maybe that point size is a little big. I can add the X and Y titles. So if you click the plus symbol next to this text box, we can use the, uh, Let's see, this is the Y that I did first. Oh, no, it's not. It's the X. Well, actually, this is handy to know. I can just click and drag and move that token from one to another. And we can, uh, well, I'm going to have to just change that from, from this one and change this to the X label and hit return. Okay, so now I have my pH labeled properly, my pepsin labeled property, and I have the plot of my line. Now I'm back in my completed example file to show you where you can get a copy of the same image if you want to follow along with us. And over here in the data panel, here is where there is a link to the Wikipedia page where I got this image for the gastric chief cell. You can also find these links in the description of this video. Let's go back now into my file. And I've already gone ahead and downloaded one of those images. And we're going to make a clone, first of all, of the graph that we're working on so we can have the basic version as is. And we'll go ahead and change now this version. So to get the image into this file, I'm going to go to my finder where I already have my downloads folder all set up. Here's the image I'm going to bring in. And I can just simply drag and drop this file right within my list of commands. When I do that, because of the size of this image in terms of the number of pixels, it's taking over my entire graph. Well, I can quickly change the scale to scale this down so I can see the whole image. 
But the other thing that I want to do here is, again, I want to split this graph. So I have the graph on the right and I have my, or the, sorry, the image is on the right and the graph is on the left. So go ahead up to the canvas settings and click split X. Now you'll notice that every command has the axis selector on it. So I'm going to move my graphic over here to the right hand side. And um, the other thing that I want to do is I want to anchor this. So currently it's anchored into the center. So if I make this smaller, you can see it goes right to the center of this graphic. Well, I want to anchor this to the lower center. And the reason is that then as I, oops, that wasn't what I meant to zoom. As I scale up my graph, you see how the bottom part where there's that pointer stays within the graph itself. And that's going to be the feature of this image as I use it. But the other problem here is that the graph is overlapping the, the image, uh, the, the, the entire graph. So to um, have it cropped by the axis rectangle, you can expand the graphic command and down on the bottom here, see the button that you can, or the checkbox that you can select, clip with axis rectangle. And there it is. Now I have my image, uh, it looks nicely balanced and it's cropped where I want it to be. We are in the home stretch. There's just some final formatting here to really shape this up so it would be ready to bring into a document. For example, one of the things with the graph we're working on is that it's going to be sensitive to the size that I ch change here. And I want this again to be set for a document. And let's go into our final version just to look for a moment at some of the other things that we still need to do. So this one has been sized. So it's a set size, six inches by three inches, perfect for bringing into a document. Um, we've also changed the color of these points to match the image, which I, I think looks kind of cool. We've added labels both for each of the uh, each of the panels, as well as added a label for where this cell came from. So let's go back into our file here and let's finish off these final steps. Let's start with the size. We change that up in the canvas settings. We'll change this from automatic to specified, and I'm going to make this six inches by three inches. This looks a little bit small here, so we can also bump up the zoom so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, and now notice that the scaling of my image is not quite where I want it to be. So I can bring this back down to a scaling that looks more reasonable. Also my point size, I probably want this a little bit smaller. And even my font, really for a document, a font of 10 point, for example, is usually pretty good within an image. The other thing that you'll notice here is uh, the distance here looks a little big, so I can change this now that I've sized this to a narrow distance. A quick way to do that is to right click or control click uh, on the axis and change Y space to narrow. So I think that looks a little bit better. Now let's format the plot command and the points command to match the example file. First in the plot command, I had a line style of a dashed line. That's all we need to do there. For the points command, there's a couple of things that I did. First of all, we don't want to have a red color for the error bars. So if you go back into this command, there's a color tile down at the bottom for what the error line is colored as. We can change this to the pen color to make that black. And for the points themselves, uh, it's set to a marker with an outline, which it, that is what I want, even though if you look for a moment at the example file here, uh, it does look like a solid point, but actually I have an outline there and it's a white outline. This is why I wanted to use a separate command for the point and the plot command. So I'm going to change, uh, maybe before I change the outline, let's change the interior color to match my graphic because I just think that was kind of a cool thing to do. So you can go down to the color picker and then use the dropper somewhere within your graphic, finding a color that you like and changing the points to that color. So now the outline here, again, I, I think it just looks really nice for the outline actually to be white. And then it gives a bit of a separation between the points and the line 
uh, while maintaining a look of a solid point. Now to add our text labels, there's actually three text commands that I'm going to use to label this image. And to do that, you can go up to the label menu in the toolbar, click that, and add three text commands. So you can click the add button three times, one, two, three. And now I have these three text commands that I've added. You can't see all three of them on the graph because they're all in the same place by default. Let me go ahead actually and just collapse these down. I'll do a command A to select all, a left arrow to collapse them. And uh, two of these I'm going to place on the right hand side. I usually kind of move these a little bit away from the corner. So maybe I would want this to be uh, a little bit of an offset. One of these also would be, again, a little bit of an offset. But one of the text commands I'm going to move, instead of being inside, I'm going to say that I want it to be below my graph. There it is there. And we'll anchor it to the left. So now all the text is exactly where I want it. You can double click on any of these and type in the uh, text that you want to be there. The other thing that I did do, however, that you will note is the text that is on top of the image is very hard to see without some type of an outline. So I can go to click on this. Oh, I don't want to double click because then I'm getting the editing. If you click any of these just one time, notice it will highlight the command corresponding to that particular text that's text label that's there. So for this, I'm going to change the background from nothing to outline and now you can see that text a lot better. The last thing I do want to point out to you that I uh, did a, a, a little bit of a detail with the URL. I did bump the size down of that a little bit. You can go to that text command and off to the right hand side on the same line where the font is specified, you can change the sizing to be a little bit smaller than everything else that's in your graph. It's changing it relative to the main font. Uh, and the other thing to note, let's go now, rather than me typing in all this text, let's just look at the final version. And, uh, and if you double click on the URL, you'll see the actual text that I typed in here or that I pasted in, but I did have to edit the URL a little bit. What I have here is a backslash in front of the underscores, because if you don't have that, it will assume the underscore is indicating you want to make a character a subscript. Uh, so that's the way that you tell it, uh, just show me the underscore, don't use it as an indicator of a subscript. The last thing we're going to do is perhaps the most satisfying, which is to take the image that we've created, you can right click on it, go down to copy, copy figure, and go to a document and go ahead and paste this in. This is my working copy of my report on gastric chief cells and pepsin, and I think this looks really nice. Thanks so much for watching. If this was helpful to you, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And uh, until next time.